Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
Redeemer. So we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge. Who lives and reigns with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared for the salvation of all men, training us to renounce irreligion and worldly passions, and to live sober, upright, and godly lives in this world, waiting our blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of the great God and our Son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for redeem us from all iniquity and to purify himself a people for his own who are zealous for good deeds the word of the lord thanks be to god a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, 
the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in the swallowed cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of the great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swallowed clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to seen and not heard. And that usually meant that all the grandchildren were sent off to an area so the adults could have meaningful conversation, you see. And Joe said that as a child, she was always looking forward to the day when she could be an adult and she could try out some of those ideas that were tried out on her. Unfortunately, it is the 21st century. And today, in many settings, adults will be seen but not heard. It's a kind of new way of doing business. There was a time when you see becoming an elder, if you will, meant having a degree of wisdom. Now becoming an elder means, you've got to be kidding me, you think that? And so in many ways, we live in a world today where behaviors can no longer always be assessed on the basis of there's a time and a place. Because to say that there's a time and a place means that we're supposed to have filters, right? That means that we decide that some of the things that are going on up here 
ought not to really come out here. Unless you live in the 21st century. When virtually every thought and every opinion and every idea has to go out. Because why? Everybody must be interested in what's on my mind. But is everybody really interested on, in what's on everybody's mind? Well, this is a heartbreak for some, but no, it really isn't. And yet, in many ways, we are living in, is this the time or the place? And I'm sorry, this is not the best time for a pandemic. I mean, did anybody involve you in voting on whether there'd be a pandemic or not? No. We had no say in the matter. In fact, it's what I like to tell people is a little bit like a perpetual snow day in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and what that would mean is we children would always hope that it would snow. I mean, why wouldn't it? We're always singing it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, let it snow, let it snow. So we expected it would. What we liked about snow days is we had a few days off. The very thing that our parents did not enjoy. Because then we had a few days off. And what that meant was that the parents had to try and figure out what to do with having children at home because parents had already gotten into the rhythm of what life would be like when the kids were at school. Now we're living in a perpetual snow day. Parents have to figure out what in the world to do with all these children who are at home. And the children are even trying to figure out what to do with all these adults that are hovering around them all the time. So really, in many ways, is not the best set of circumstances. So what I want to tell you tonight is there is the right time and there is the right place. But you have to know when it is and where it is for what I'm about to say to make sense. And here it is. Two lights. That's it. End of sermon. <laughs> Two lights. But I'm glad you asked. Light number one. Can you imagine a worse time in your life in many ways than to have to live through this pandemic? I know. I said I wouldn't talk about it, but it needs to be mentioned. Because you see, this past Monday, this past Monday, people were outside looking at a light. Now, when's the last time that people saw a light like that? This planetary conjunction, or whatever one wants to call it. I mean, I'm really interested in what astronomers have to say and scientists have to say. But what I'm really enjoying is noting that astronomers and scientists have to admit that if they do their homework, they can figure out that what we saw on Monday night is precisely what was seen 2,000 years ago. I mean, that's when it was. Now you may say, how do you know you weren't here? Good point, I wasn't. Although, you know, some teenagers think I was. <laughs> but the circumstances are that the way in which this lineup occurred made it so bright that we know that there were those in the East who saw it, right? I mean, further East than New York City even, who actually saw this. When they looked into the sky and there you were on Monday night seeing the same light. When's the last time that occurred? 17th century. How about before that? 13th century. In fact, what I find very ironic in a variety of ways are the pivotal dates and what happened on, some, on those dates. For me at least, the 1226 date really strikes me in a particular way, and I'll tell you why, because there was a very bright light in the church by the name of St. Francis of Assisi, and that's when he died. If you go back and look at the dates, when this conjunction has occurred, when this star of Bethlehem or Christmas star or whatever you want to call it occurred, 
there were pivotal things going on in the world at that time. And this time, it's a pandemic. And if there were ever a time when this dark world needs to see a light, it is right now. Now, I have to say that some people don't know what to do with light. Well, it's true. For example, the possums who live at my house don't know what to do with the light at night, I noticed. When they set off, you know, the light, and the light comes on, they scurry more rapidly to see what food we didn't eat at supper. You know, when you were a child and they told you how to eat all in your plate because of the starving Armenians or whatever, I don't know what group was in for you. When I was a child, it was the starving Armenians. So we all had to eat all the food. Between you and me, I've met Armenians. I think they do okay. But nonetheless, these possums are really okay because, you see, we now have an excuse not to eat everything on our plate because the possums get to have. But do you know what the possums saw the other night, even though they didn't particularly like when the lights come on on my system outside? They had more light on Monday night. If you look carefully at that light, you can see how somebody would be drawn to it. You can see how people would see that light and want to go and see where it went. And particularly, if you were from a part of the world that has studied it, where the predictions were there, that one day a light would come. And that light would lead them to the Savior of the world, Jesus the Christ. Well, that's one light. How about a second light? Second light. See this light? Okay. This light was ignited in the crypt chapel in the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. This light has been passed from person to person to person. From that light in the cave in Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. And you have this light with you tonight just as surely as you had that light on Monday night. Now, I don't know how you feel about having this light with you, but I want you to think about two things. Number one, I've been down there for Christmas. I've been in the cave. I've been at the actual place where Jesus was born. I have put incense there. I have lighted candles there. I have seen the light that gets struck down there and is carried from place to place. But I want you to think about all the effort that has gone into bringing this light here, at this time, in this place. This light will light whether this church is packed or not. This light will light whether there's a pandemic or not. This light will light whether you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lord and King of Kings or not. This light will burn brightly if you're angry, happy, any of the other gamut of emotions that people can gather up at any given time has no effect on this light. And the reason that is important is because in many instances, as we listen day after day, when I go over to that side of the altar at the very end after the blessing, do you remember what I say? How many times do I mention the word light? And you know why that is? Whether you like it or not, it wasn't just John the Baptist who was confused as being the light. But the day in the world in which we live, we oftentimes think of ourselves as the light. We do. I mean, everything that 
is going on is all about us. As I said to some of you, I was talking to a merchant friend of mine, they're not allowed to sell little bags of coal anymore that say naughty on them because it might hurt somebody's feelings. Because we're always nice, we're not naughty. It's a little bit like the badges that we get whenever we show up for something. We get a showing up badge, I guess. It's somehow so delicate, we can't upset anybody. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you something, and I want you to remember this. The Bible is clear. All, that's all, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I mean, that's a fact. We have to accept it. And if we don't accept that, then we have to ask ourselves, why in the world Jesus came into the world? Did he come into the world just to light our fire? Did he come into the world just so he could go over to one person and start singing, How Great Thou Art to them? Or did he come into the world so we could learn who he was because God knows we needed a light? I have to say that not as many people ask me that question anymore, and I'm glad for that. You got a light? Because I want to tell you, I was poised when I became a priest to give them the answer for that question. If you got a light, oh, I was ready. Then people stopped smoking. Yeah. <laughs> and that's good. But if you say to me, if you got a light, I want to tell you I've got a light. And if that's not good enough, then you look up into the sky. So why in the world did the light have to come into the world? I mean, wouldn't we become bright enough someday where we could invent street lights and we wouldn't need candles anymore? Well, yes. But it misses the point. We are not talking about an artificial type of light that somehow just makes us feel better. We're talking about a light that when it comes into the world does two things. I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. I am led to believe that my grandmother, uh, the Swedish grandmother, was very, very particular about keeping a clean house. And that house looked fairly clean with the gas lights that she had in her house. And somebody decided to install electricity in her house. And she about had a heart attack on the spot. Because the moment that electric lights came, people started seeing the dust and the dirt that they had missed. Now the light was shining everywhere. And that's why the light came into the world, to show us, show us, that we need to be forgiven. Now, isn't it interesting, if you really stop and think about it, if I were to go around the church right now and I would say, tell me what your favorite Bible verse is. So let me try that out. Tell me what your favorite Bible verse is. Well, most polls result in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But it's interesting from my perspective that we only get half the story. What I mean is, people sometimes take Bible verses and they hold them up, and they don't bother to look at what was before or right after. Do you know what John 3.17 says? For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, most people, when they talk about being saved, they want to be saved from something, don't they? And the truth is, in some instances, the culture in which we live today, sometimes we really just need to be saved from ourselves. We really do. Many of the problems we get into are problems that we cause. And you do remember the old saying, when there's a problem... You're either part of the solution or you're part of, part of the cause. Right? And Jesus came into the world to resolve the unnecessary problems 
that existed so that he could be the light, so that when we saw our sin, the price that he would pay would be understood to be so great. Let me jump forward a little bit with you, just so you remember, Jesus personally died for you on the cross for your sin. See, most people would like to hear about he personally came for me so I could get whatever, kind of like, oh, I don't know, a celestial Santa Claus that comes into the world. But Jesus didn't come into the world just to fulfill our wish lists. Jesus came into the world to be able to rearrange our wish lists so that we would learn when we become wiser that some of the things that we really want in life really aren't needs. They're wants. It's what I want for me. It's what I want because I want it. It's because I want it and I want it now. So let's go back to the very beginning. Two lights. Light number one, I promise you, is going to guide you. You look at that star and you remember that in order for you to understand why Jesus came into the world, you need to keep your eyes firmly fixed on him and follow him. Two. This light represents not only the cave, but it is from the cave. But when I think about this light, do you know what I think about? I think about our deacon and what it took for him to be able to get this light. I mean, can I say it? On his way back, the light blew out in Kansas City and he had to start over again. That doesn't mean the original light, because that light was being handed out. But do you see this light here? It is a parable of life. Because lately, in the life of our deacon, like so many of you, working in terribly difficult circumstances, lots of us feel like somebody's trying to blow out our light. But if you keep your eyes firmly fixed on Jesus, that light will not blow out. It cannot be extinguished. And so, beloved in Christ, what can we say at a difficult time like this when people are suffering? When they are in pain? I know. I know. I'm sorry to have to say this. Sorry to have to say this. But there is COVID-19 behavior out there. There is. You can find the ways in which people are not integrating well, ways in which people are engaged in conflict. But why is that? Because when we're frustrated and constantly frustrated, and we set yet another goal as to when this is all going to be over, we have to blame somebody. So who are we angry with when things don't go the way we want them? Yes, indeed. Sometimes we're really angry with God. And so I want you to know that all of your COVID behaviors, your anger, your frustrations, all of those, you can leave here tonight. Let me put it in another way. I asked you a question a few weeks ago. What's the birthday present that you got for Jesus this year? Did you wrap it up? Where did you put it? But you see, you are the gift that Jesus wants for his birthday. He wants you to come to him and say, I'm upset with you. He wants you to be honest with him. I mean, God's been in the God business a long time, you understand. <laughs> There's nothing you can say that he hasn't already heard. But he does need to hear you say it. Because until you can really admit what's going on inside of you right now, how can God really heal it? Do you want him to bypass your will? Do you want him to bypass your innermost thoughts? 
So put them out there, and I'm going to suggest for you to do that tonight. At the general confession, we're going to pause, and I'm just going to ask you to be able to put before him those things which you know you don't want to take home with you tonight. Leave them here. Leave them with Jesus. Your uncertainties, your doubts, your frustrations, leave them here. He's already asked, what did he say? Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I want you to leave here tonight a little bit lighter. And there's that word. If you will look at the light that leads you, and if you will look at the light that is coming to the world, there will be more in the lightness, but you will certainly feel less burdened. Lay it here tonight, beloved, in Christ. And may the light of Jesus Christ shine in your hearts, both now and throughout these 12 days of Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I would add to all the lights in this church tonight, all the candles have been lighted from this light. Mm -hmm.
be unemployed and the destitute, or prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. comfortable words our Savior Christ said to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. 
For God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he's the propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but for the sins of the whole world. I greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I sincerely ask that you leave behind your burdens. Remember, he considers them to be gifts because he asked for them. So leave your burdens behind. Leave a little bit lighter when you go home tonight, having left those burdens that are troubling you at this time. I especially want to pray for all who are sick in any way, and for those who have died in the past year since our last Christmas celebration. I want to remind you that at St. Timothy's we take seriously keeping everybody safe. We have gloves, masks, we have everything that we're required to have available, and I say that to those of you who are wondering if it's safe here, we keep as safe as we possibly can in every conceivable way. But at the same time, we want to be able to minister to everybody in need. Now, uh, I would remind all of you that the calendars for this year are in, and I sincerely hope that those who are here this evening will take the calendar with you. And if you know somebody in the parish who is sick or unable to come, you might want to take a calendar for them so that they might be able to keep track of all the events that are coming up. Uh, I would also ask that as the procession goes out, we don't have recessions in the church, by the way. We only have processions. And so as the procession goes out, and goes to the crest to place the bambino in the crest. In the past, people have joyfully come and taken pictures because of the requirement of us sitting a distance from one another, and family members can sit together, but a distance from others. I'm gonna ask that perhaps you take a picture from your place in the pew rather than going back simply because I'm trying to keep you as safe as I can. I will ask that the camera go back so that you will have a record if you want a little close-up of what is happening. It's a joy to be able to see you. I pray that God will continue to bless you and your families. And do know that your parish family stands ready to be able to intercede, to be able to offer up prayers for you and for all the needs that you come with this night. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Live for the Lord, for he is
Christ is offered to the greater glory of God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, with special intention for all members and friends of St. Timothy, for their help, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to fall upon them, and for their load to be lightened, as they keep their eyes firmly fixed on the light, for this is the time, and this is the place. Pray, brethren, this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice in thy hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me.
God, behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
must hardly thank thee, for thou hast not saved to feed us, who have received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members of the corporate and the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also the heirs through all of their everlasting kingdom, by the merits of this most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to move in thee in the Holy Ghost, in all thy glory, world without end. Amen. O oh God, who hast made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light, for as we beseech thee that we who have known the mysteries of his light honor may attain unto the fruition of his joys in heaven, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit live in the reign of God, world without end.
go. And with thy spirit, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who has on this night it's caused thine only begotten Son to come down from heaven to be born of the blessed and glorious ever Virgin Mary for our salvation. Vouchsafe, we beseech thee so to bless and hallow this crib. wherein are shown forth the wonders of that sacred birth, that all they who behold the same shall ponder and adore the mystery of his holy incarnation, may be fulfilled with thy heavenly benediction unto life eternal, through the same Christ our Lord.